I, I think that's right, Anne. I think all the all the evidence would suggest that, uh, in fact, we're we're probably talking about the lower cost, the the, the cost saving uh, route is uh, through uh, green growth. Um, uh, studies now over numbers of years have been have been showing this that there are uh, essential changes that have to be made. I mean, the International Energy Agency now isn't the most radical of of uh, uh, bodies as an OECD uh, organization and it talks in terms of a revolution in energy technologies over the next uh, three or four decades and that being essential in order that we we meet the uh, the climate change uh, imperatives that's that's a challenge but it's also a huge opportunity in 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 working with that as as the thing from trying to defer it all the evidence is the sooner we grapple uh, with this uh, challenge the uh, less costly it's going to be. I, I, I think these, these, uh, this, this kind of agenda is kind of uh, is cross-party or, or, you know, if you like, it's beyond party politics. Um, governments across Europe um, of every hue have have adopted this, uh, and uh, I think it's as I say tra trans trans party. If we look at the program for government, we see indeed in in quite a few areas an intensification of the uh, activity. For instance, in in energy efficiency, in uh, uh, speeding up delivery of uh, marine energy. Um, uh, so there's there's actually uh, I, I think it's written into into the pro program for government. Smart grid seems seems to us to represent a, a, a really considerable opportunity for for Ireland. Um, we have some things which are strongly in our favour: uh, an all island uh, single electricity market, a single uh, transmission system operator, a single distribution system operator. Um, a, 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 uh, while it's it's more or less an island grid, not not completely an island grid, an isolated electricity grid, but it is a grid which is, uh, it's one of the foremost uh, in Europe in terms in terms of the percentage of, if I could call them new renewables, as distinct from hydropower and biomass, for instance, that don't present the same challenges of the as uh, let's say uh, wind energy in terms of its its variability that's a particular challenge for the system operators and uh, airgrid is uh, a pioneer in in maintaining uh, quality electricity supply with that kind of characteristic of a high penetration of renewables um, that's one part of the smart grid the other part of it is uh, ireland's uh, great strengths in uh, ict uh, in in both startup uh, companies in, in really uh, smart um, uh, software companies and, and uh, electronic products development, but also in some of the, the real uh, world leaders in terms of Google and Intel and all the, the big players. So you have that combination of, of the, the intelligence on that side, which can uh, be applied on the demand side, and the experience in developing um, smart generation, smart gen distribution, that bring, gives Ireland, I think, a special place to, to offer itself as a place to, to uh, prototype new systems, to uh, run, be among the, the lead uh, deployments of, of the technologies which are promise to, to transform electrical distribution and supply, I think, around the world. Well, we've been we've been experiencing uh, fifteen percent per annum growth over, say, the past five years in in wind. Um, uh, that's pretty well all uh, onshore wind. Um, the pattern maybe hasn't been as regular as we would like. We, um, Twenty ten wasn't a, a great year for investment. We're all aware of kind of how tight finan project finance is and so on at the moment. It does present particular challenges for a youngish industry um, if it's trying to, to plan and, and work efficiently uh, to have that very variable uh, uh, demand isn't, isn't uh, uh, ideal. Um, so 
in order to deliver uh, not on just on, on targets, if you like, but on the legislative requirements made of us under uh, European legislation, um, we really do need to intensify the deployment of, of wind. That, that, that presents you know, quite a few challenges across our, our, our system. But there certainly is very strong performance to point to. Clean tech, I think, does does represent a, a huge opportunity for for enterprise development and employment uh, creation. I mean, we we certainly can see it very directly in the in the work which SEAI uh, has has supported uh, uh, on behalf of of the government in delivering uh, the upgrading of uh, of the homes of of the country, both through the uh, home energy savings scheme and through the warmer warmer homes uh, uh, scheme and uh, really quite significant numbers of dwellings now being, being uh, upgraded here. And because it all kind of goes through our, our uh, computer systems that we can, we can measure those direct uh, employment uh, pretty exactly. And we, we know that there's over 5,000 uh, jobs this year being, being uh, supported in, in that area. But of course, there's, behind that, there's also indirect employment. Um, and that's not so not not so easy to measure, but in the suppliers and so on, um, and we shouldn't either overlook that there's there's a further employment effect because if if people have more money in their pocket because they're not paying it out to for oil or gas to be imported, that country stays uh, that money stays in Ireland, and it tends to induce even greater amounts of employment, uh, and there's there's some very good international uh, evidence to show that there's a really significant employment multiplier there. We'd like to uh, uh, encourage more work on quantifying that because I think employment is so such a big part of our agenda now that we really, uh, I, th I think it's very, very useful um, uh, evidence to even uh, enhance the support for, for this, this kind of work. Um, that's in, in the, you know, the efficiency side. Um, similarly, in uh, deploying renewables, in turning to indigenous uh, resources, in reducing this hemorrhage, which, which at the moment amounts to close to six billion euro a year that we pay for uh, imported oil. Apart from improving the security and reducing this vulnerability we have to interruptions in, in supply and uh, of oil and gas, and of course the pretty steady increase, indeed maybe steady is the wrong word for it, the often pretty fast increase in, in oil uh, prices, and gas has also been uh, going up alarmingly in, in price. We replace that with indigenous resources developed here, um, creating employment in making them, and also in maintaining and operating these systems. That seems to me to be a, a, a pretty powerful um, argument for investment in efficiency and uh, renewables.